welcome to easy concept so we are going to see the uh, question analysis 2017 trb polytechnic okay so this is the question next question that is question number 51 blani griddle method is used to determine again okay, your operation consumptive use of crop infiltration interception okay so see first of all we need to understand i will give some of the nodes which is related to this okay first one is your operation so your operation which was calculated by using the following methods the operation can be measured by the first one is pan measurement pan measurement second one is analytical method analytical method third one is empirical method empirical by using these three methods we will calculate the operation okay now in the analytical method we are having three one is water budget equation second one is energy budget energy bu budget equation and the uh, last one is mass transfer method mass transfer method okay next one is empirical formula the empirical formula we are having filstrald method filstrald equation then is a mayer's equation then rovers equation so these are the some of the empirical formulas or rovers equation so the operation can be determined by using the pan measurement analytical methods empirical methods so on and so forth okay then next one is your port transpiration your port transpiration your port transpiration can be determined by using first one is lyse meter second one is penman's method or penman's equation third one is blani griddle formula or equation these three are the used for your power transpiration next one is transpiration transpiration which was calculated by using phytometer phytometer so this is the thing so from that we understood blani griddle method is used to determine uh your power transpiration your power transpiration also called it as consumptive use consumptive so the answer for this question is now okay now next one storage capacity of a reservoir can be fixed by mass curve method okay that is the storage capacity and uh, that storage capacity is defined as storage capacity is defined as well yield per unit drawdown well yield per unit drawdown that is a storage capacity okay storage capacity is defined as yield per unit drawdown okay now some other definitions also there that also you have to keep in your mind maybe in the upcoming years it will be possible to come the specific yield specific yield is volume of water 
uh, required. So a volume of water drained. Drained by gravity per unit drained volume of aquifer per unit drained volume of aquifer okay next one is specific uh, retention specific retention that is volume of water here drained but here volume of water uh, retained by gravity retained against gravity retained against gravity per unit volume of aquifer per unit volume of aquifer so specific retention is opposite of specific yield okay then specific storage then specific storage specific storage is volume of water released volume of water released from unit volume of aquifer from unit volume of aquifer per unit decline per unit decline in piezometry head in piezometric unit decline piezometric head your volume of water released from unit volume of aquifer aquifer for unit decline in piezometry head so these four definitions are important you have to just read it the upcoming years you can expect a question okay now crop period is the time is the time a crop takes you know the crop period is a time which is takes for first that is sowing to harvesting so this is the crop period crop period means it is a time between watering which is given from sowing to harvesting from sowing to harvesting that is the crop period okay then first time of watering to last time of watering which is called as a base period base period you know always the base period base period is greater than crop period always so you have to keep this in your mind crop period so base period is greater than crop period so this also you have to keep in your mind okay next question if the pipes of different lengths and diameters are connected with the one end of one another to form connected with the one another to form a pipeline such a pipeline is called such a pipeline is called is a compound pipe okay compound pipe in the sense the pipe of different lengths and diameters are connected with the one another to form a pipeline so this is called as a compound pipe compound pipe that means this is a one pipe and this is another pipe and this is another pipe and this is another pipe so different diameter of pipe which was which are connected so this is the Pipe. Okay, now, now this is the different diameter of pipe. So if you connect the different diameters of pipe, then we can call this. This is the compound pipe. Now, 
if such a pipe is replaced by a single pipe diameter if this pipe is replaced by a single pipe diameter replaced by a single pipe diameter with the same rate of flow that means whatever rate of flow which has happened in the compound pipe same rate of flow and whatever head loss which is happened in the compound pipe okay and the same length of compound pipe but only the diameter is changed okay if the diameter is changed by keeping all other quantities are constant then we can call this this is the equivalent pipe so these two pipes are equivalent now now this equivalent of pipe l divided by d power pi this is the equivalent quantity which is equal to for this one we are converting this series pipe into equivalent pipe right therefore l1 this is l1 this is l2 for example l3 this is l4 therefore l1 divided by d1 power 5 plus l2 divided by d2 power 5 plus l3 divided by d3 power 5 plus etc okay so this is the answer answer for this question is b yeah. specific speed of a turbine can be calculated using the formula ns is equal to so the 2012th question also the same question have been asked right here this turbine's vc speed is n root of p divided by h power 5 by 4 so answer for this question is D and you know for turbine N S is equal to N in the root of P H power 5 by 4 then for for pump N S is equal to N root of Q divided by h power 3 by 4 so this is the answer so you have to keep in your mind this for turbine n is equal to n into root of p divided by h power 5 by 4 for pump n is equal to n root of q divided by h power 3 by 4 okay so this is the answer now the water supply project under normal circumstances so this is the water supply project okay under normal circumstances may be planned for a decent period of so actually the answer for this question is for water supply projects okay here water supply so here water supply therefore you can call this this is the distribution system distribution system the distribution system has been designed for a decent period of 30 years okay so some other decent period of uh, the water supply system includes the first one is we can write this is the pipeline water treatment unit water treatment unit storage reservoir storage reservoir pump distribution system distribution system and these are the important uh, the pipelines and the treatment unit yeah, under the water or uh, water supply system so in that we have to keep in our mind that is various demand of each and everything then design period then design period Okay.
so various demand for pipeline the pipeline which is designed for maximum daily demand maximum daily demand is equal to 1.8 times the average daily demand okay for water treatment unit maximum daily demand which is equal to say 1.8 times the average daily demand this water treatment unit is designed for maximum daily demand which is equal to 1.8 times the average daily demand and similarly for a storage reservoir also maximum daily demand is equal to 1.8 times the average daily demand then for pump the max pump for pump maximum daily demand which is equal to two times the is equal to two times the average daily demand then the distribution system is designed for coincident trap incident trap distribution system is designed for coincident trap which is equal to maximum of maximum of maximum daily demand plus fire demand fire demand or maximum hourly demand okay the design period of pipeline is 30 years and the distribution system also 30 years okay then for water treatment unit this is equal to 15 years the storage reservoir which is designed for 50 years okay now these are the important but the pump we are not giving any design period okay pump is a mechanical equipment so that is designed by the mechanical engineers so leave it this pump okay so these are not the important points you have to keep in your mind the upcoming years you can expect a question mdd means maximum daily demand add means average daily demand okay so these are the things that you have to keep in your mind next one the settling velocity of a spherical particle is expressed by we know stokes law the settling velocity of a spherical particle is expressed by stokes law okay now temporary hardness is due to the presence of before that let me explain hardness there are two types of hardness one is temporary hardness temporary hardness another one is permanent hardness another one is permanent hardness so temporary hardness okay it is defined as carbonate and bicarbonate of co3 2 minus hco3 minus this is carbonate this is bicarbonate of calcium 2 plus and magnesium 2 plus so temporary hardness means carbonate and bicarbonate of calcium and magnesium Permanent hardness is defined as sulfate and chloride and chloride of calcium and magnesium. Okay, sulfate and chloride of calcium and magnesium permanent hardness, carbonate and bicarbonate of calcium and magnesium is temporary hardness. Now it can be removed by it can be removed by first one boiling. It can be removed by boiling. Second one adding lime. Second one adding lime. The permanent hardness can be removed by it can be removed by 
it can be removed by one lime soda process lime soda process second one is iron exchange process iron exchange process or we can say base exchange process iron exchange process or base exchange process and the third one is zeolite process okay so these are the some of the points you have to keep in your mind for hardness now they are saying the temporary hardness is a carbonate and bicarbonate of calcium and magnesium so so this is the permanent hardness chloride is a permanent hardness nitrate you know that is bicarbonate of calcium and magnesium so this is the answer okay also this temporary hardness call it as alkaline and non-alkaline this is also called as alkaline hardness this is non-alkaline non-alkaline hardness okay this also you have to keep in your mind for your examination perspective okay now most common artificial zeolite is permuted okay so the answer for this question is permitted the most common artificial zeolite is permitted there are two zeolite and is natural zeolite is called it as green sand green sand next one is artificial artificial zeolite which is permitted permitted so answer for this question is now c okay next one is in air pollution pan is expansion of pan is peroxyacetyl nitride peroxyacetyl nitrate peroxyacetyl nitrate so nitrate is the correct answer okay so and some more things i let me give in air pollution so this is the question you can expect this year air pollution there are two types of air pollution one is a primary air pollution and another one is a secondary air pollution another one is a secondary air pollution and the primary air pollution which is particulate second one is pollen grains next uh, carbon monoxide then uh, oxides of sulfur sox okay sox means oxides of sulfur sox oxides of nitrogen nox hydrocarbons then photochemical oxidant next one is photochemical photochemical oxidants then radioactive material radioactive material next one is lead halogen hydrogen compound so these are the important points okay the primary air pollutants so uh, they will ask you which one of the following is the primary air pollutants or secondary air pollutants so this is the repeated question okay uh, which was asked in some of the examinations so you can expect this question in the upcoming years okay for secondary air pollution first one is ozone and the second one is pan pan means peroxyacetyl nitrate okay peroxyacetyl nitrate and the next one is smog smog is fog plus smoke fog plus smoke 
next is sulfuric acid so these all are the important points okay and next one if the temperature of a sedimentation tank is increased the sedimentation speed will be get hastened get slowed down not affected at all none of these above so we know that listen the settling velocity is equal to g divided by 18 in the g minus 1 in the d square divided by mu into rho w so this is the formula we know that now you can write settling velocity is directly proportional to 1 by mu mu means what viscosity so settling velocity is directly proportional to now we can write 1 divided by what is a mu we know that mu is directly proportional to 1 by temperature if the temperature increases the viscosity reduces right therefore if you plug here therefore vs is directly proportional to 1 by 1 by t so which implies vs is directly proportional to t if the temperature is increases then the settling velocity also increases therefore answer for this question is get hastened that means hastened means it is increases okay so meaning it is to be quick okay to be quick hastened means it will be increased therefore the meaning okay then next one is the suitable layout of a water supply distribution system for a city of rectangular pattern for rectangular pattern this is the answer grid ion system okay so grid ion system is the most suitable system for a rectangular road pattern and a ring system and radial system both are used for a well uh, is a developed city but this one the dead end system is used for old town or city for old town or city we will use the dead end system okay next one the sewer which transport the sewage to the point of treatment is called to the point of treatment is called see first of all what is a sewerage system we have to keep in our mind sewerage system what is a sewerage system you know there was a house this is the house house from this house we will take your water or a sewage and this is called as a lateral the lateral means is the sewage pipe or sewerage or pipe which is coming from the house. Now this pipe is connected to is connected to another pipe that is called the branch. That is called the branch. Now this branch pipe is connected to connected to submine, which is connected to submine. Now this submine which is connected to main sewer, which is connected to main sewer. Okay, this is main sewer. Main sewer. And this main sewer now joined or goes into the sewage treatment plant. What is STP? STP is equal to sewage. Treatment plant. Now the sewage treatment plant. Now it will go from sewage treatment plant to this is the outfall sewer. Outfall sewer means after treating the sewage, we will use the outfall sewer in order to let this treated sewage into the river this is the river or any water body so river okay and you know this also you have to keep in your mind the outfall sewer flows by this outfall sewer flows by flows by pressure force but the main sewer it flows by 
it flows by gravity force it flows by gravity force main sewer flows by gravity force but alpha sewer flows by pressure force now what is the answer the answer for this question is the sewer which transport the uh, transport the sewage to the point of treatment this is the point of treatment from the point of treatment which sewer is we are using that is a outfall sewer so the answer for this question outfall sewer understood next one a gully trap is provided at the junction of actually gully trap is a trap which is separate the storm water with the, the kitchen drain and a foul bath drain that means our toilet waste and the storm water waste okay actually the gully trap is a trap which is separates the which is separates the storm water flow pipe storm water pipe as well as the toilet pipe okay the pipe which is coming from the toilet and kitchen okay so the answer for this question is b an unfouled roof that is a storm water okay or room drain so this is the storm water storm water and a foul bath or kitchen drain so it is separating that means it is a junction okay kali trap is a junction between unfold roof or room drain and a foul bath or a kitchen drain okay so answer for this question is b now eutrophication of water body is caused by excessive discharge of nutrients this is very very important meaning after treating the sewage if the sewage is having much amount of nutrients that means nitrate okay uh, then uh, sulfate so this uh, then uh, carbonate okay so carbon compound carbon if these three content if you discharge into the water body then the growth of alga will be takes place much so why this growth of uh, alga, alga is uh, much more because of discharging these nutrients these are our called as nutrients so because of discharging these nutrients there was a growth of alga will be happened this growth of alga is called as eutrophication The growth of alga is called as eutrophication. Why this growth of alga is happened? Because of excessive discharge of nutrients into the water body. Okay. So this is the question. I hope you understood. Now we can move for next one. The final end one at the end A. In a beam A B due to rotation theta A comma theta B. And a downward settlement that is support B is given by, you know, for example, there was a support, sorry, there was a span, there was a span, this is the beam, this point is A, this point is B, and there was a moment, here is moment, and here also another moment, for example. This is MAB. This is MBA. And there was a singing of support also. But the singing by an amount of delta. For example, it sinks down. Okay. So that means it comes down. This is delta. Then you know what is the slope deflection formula for this case we can write m a b m a b is equal to first of all we will write fixed end moment of a b if there is a load is acting 
Okay, there is a load is acting FEAB plus 4 EA by L into theta A plus 2 EI by L into theta B. Here, this is a downward singing, therefore, you can take it as negative 6 EI by L into L square into delta. So, this is the final formula. Then, you have to rearrange this MAB, which is equal to M F A B plus 4 E A by L. You have to take 4 E A by common. Therefore, this becomes as if you take 4 E A by L common, then theta A plus if you take 4 E A by L common, then this becomes as that is theta B by 2. No, best is you have to take 2 A by L. Then we can write this 2 theta A plus theta B minus 3 A by L, 3 delta by L. So therefore 2 A plus theta B minus 3 delta by L. So the answer 2 A plus theta B. So the answer for this question is A now. Okay. So this is the answer. I hope you understood. Now we can move next question. The two hinged semicircular arch of radius R carries a concentrated load W at the crown. The horizontal thrust at each support is given by assuming the horizontal sub thrust. Yes. Let me give some of the formula. First of all, two hinged. circular arcs two hinge circular arcs you have two hinge circular arcs central point load p then h is equal to p divided by pi now two hinge circular arcs util acting throughout this span that is W kilonewton per meter, then H is equal to 4 divided by 3 W R divided by pi. Now two hinge circular arts, two hinge circular arts subjected to somewhere the load P. Okay, it makes an angle of alpha of the respective center. Therefore, H is equal to P divided by pi uh, sine square alpha. Okay. Now, similarly, three hinged arms. Three hinged circular arms. Three hinged circular arms. There is a three hinged. And the center point load W. P. Now horizontal thrust is equal to we can write P divided by 2. Okay, so these are the formula that you have to keep in your mind. Okay, now okay, sorry. Now what is the answer for this question? Answer for this question is a two hinged semicircular arch of radius R carries a concentrated load W at the crown. So therefore, this is the answer, right? This one. Answer H is equal to that is W divided by pi. Horizontal thrust at each support is given by so on and so forth. So answer for this question is C. Now next question is a cantilever of span L carries a load W at the free end. A cantilever of span L carries a load W at the free end. Okay, this is the cantilever. This is the cantilever beam of W at the free end. This is the span length L. The flexibility of the beam is given by. How can you calculate the flexibility? So flexibility matrix is determined in by removing this W external load and giving one unit load. And finding the flexibility, you have to calculate the deflection of this. So this is the deflection. So you can calculate this deflection y. 
deflection at this point O is equal to what? This deflection is equal to W L cube divided by 3 E A. So this deflection is called as a flexibility. Flexibility is a deflection. Flexibility is a deflection by due to one unit force. What is a flexibility? Flexibility is a deformation. Is a deformation due to one unit. Flexibility is a deformation due to one unit force. So answer for this question is B. L cube divided by three. Okay. Now, the flexibility matrix for a beam element F is equal to this. Then what is the corresponding stiffness matrix? We know that flexibility matrix in the stiffness matrix is equal to identity matrix. Therefore, stiffness matrix they are asking, which is equal to flexibility matrix inverse. So we know that stiffness matrix is equal to RGF divided by modulus of U. What is the RGF? We can write this is 1 by A, right? So 1 by A, the inverse is equal to EA by 1. EA by 1 into RGA is equal to, you have to rearrange this 9, 6, minus 2, minus 2, the whole divided by modulus of this matrix is equal to 9, 6 R. Uh, 9, 6 are 54 minus 4. So the answer for this is EI divided by 50, EI divided by 50 into 9 minus 2 minus 2, 6. So answer for this is 9 minus 2 minus 2. Okay, so answer for this question is this. Okay, so I hope you got it. Now we can move further. Choose the incorrect relationship. So this is a very interesting question. And this question is uh, actually is not fair enough. There are two options are correct. Incorrect relationship is option B and option C is correct. How? So See, option, this option is explained. We know that porosity into air content is equal to percentage of air voids. Okay. This relation is this. We know that this. We know that this. But if we simplify this one, then what is, this is Ns, which is equal to 1 plus E divided by E. 1 minus s is equal to air content. Okay, air content. So actually, it's not ns, this is na. na. Therefore, na into ac, which is equal to 1 plus e divided by e. So take a reciprocal. So take a reciprocal, then you can uh, take it as this is 1 divided by n, na into ac. Therefore, N and AC, which is equal to 1 by NA. So this is the value that you are getting. But actual uh, relation is what? So this is wrong. Actual relation is what? Actually, actually, the relation is NA, which is equal to N and AC. So this is the actual relation. So therefore, C is wrong. Similarly, the S. Yes, is equal to this also wrong. So we know that, so the explanation of this equation, we know that gamma is equal to G plus one by W divided by one plus E into gamma W. Okay, so actually this is, can be written as 
1 plus e which is equal to g 1 plus w divided by gamma into gamma w so we know that g gamma g w is equal to yes so if you simplify this okay if you simplify this now since we know this e is equal to g into 1 plus w g into 1 plus w into gamma w divided by gamma minus 1 what is e e is equal to g w divided by s from this equation you can write g into 1 plus w into gamma w divided by gamma minus 1 so you have to divide by g therefore you will get w by s is equal to 1 plus w into gamma w divided by gamma minus 1 divided by g since we divided by g so finally yes finally you will get something like that therefore s is equal they are asking yes right w divided by gamma w divided by gamma into 1 plus w minus 1 divided by g which is equal to degree of saturation so actually this is the formula if they given w divided by gamma w divided by gamma if we are given 1 plus w in the numerator then that is correct but i am personally feeling that there was a typing mistake in the sense in your in, in your question also they given something like that only so the question is they have the the, the question setter uh, maybe uh, they put a mistake on this okay so i i'm feeling so this maybe comes in the numerator if it is comes numerator then this is correct but now these two are uh, incorrect okay so that is b is incorrect c is incorrect understood but uh, this is correct only gamma d will formalize their one minus n into g gamma w and uh, w is equal to one minus the ratio of mass specific gravity to the specific gravity of solid divided by mass specific gravity divided by degree of saturation minus one so these two are the statement which was correct so answer b and c are incorrect now the inverse of relative density of soil we know that what is relative density or density index equal to e max minus e natural divided by e max minus e minimum into 100 so this is the actual density index formula but what is the inverse the inverse of this is inverse of that is inverse of density index which is equal to e max minus e minimum divided by e max minus e natural in the hundred so this is the answer so e max minus e minimum e max minus e minimum divided by e max minus e natural so answer for this question is this inverse okay and uh, moreover you have to keep in your mind the related density id and description so this also you have to keep in your mind so the upcoming examination they may be asked you okay see the density index is 0 to 15 15 to 35 35 to 65 65 to 85 then greater than 85 so this is 0 to 15 we will call test description very loose 15 to 35 we can call it as this is a loose 35 to 65 we can call it as loose medium 65 to 85 call it as dense this is very dense so these are already some of the uh, description that you have to keep in mind for upcoming examinations understood i hope you understood now next one for a seepage in anisotropic soil condition the scale transformation is used to obtain 
standard Laplace equation. So that is, then the flow net is drawn for a transformed section. You know, for anisotropic soil, this is the actual uh, size. This is B. This is, you can take it as a B dash. This is the actual section, actual section. Then, you know, for a transformed section, we have to change this breadth into B dash. This is a B as a square. So this B dash, that means now this B is transformed into, this also converted as a B by transforming, multiplying this B dash with a reduction factor that is K Z divided by Kx. Okay, so K Z by Kx, that is a shortening the horizontal dimension. Actual dimension is this, that we are just shortening this dimension. V is equal to B dash in the root of K Z by Kx. So answer for this question is D. Shortening horizontal dimension by K Z by Kx. Okay, then the flow net is drawn by a transform section. The length will be shortened and uh, by a value of K is set by Kx. Okay, so this is the answer. So the next question is that the dimensional unit of coefficient of consolidation. We know that the time factor is equal to Cv into T divided by drainage path. Now we can write Cv is equal to The T V is a down dimensionless factor. That was C V C equal. What is the D square? Unit is meter square. What is the T? Second. Then what is the dimension for meter square? Length square. What is the dimension for a second? T minus one. Therefore, coefficient of consolidation, the dimension is L square. T minus one. Understood? Next one. The relationship between settlement of a foundation with bf and settlement of a plate p plate with bp as per the tesagi and peck is concerned so the answer for this question is so first of all settlement criteria For settlement criteria and the bearing capacity criteria. Bearing capacity criteria. The settlement criteria that we will write settlement of footing divided by settlement of plate, which is equal to breadth of footing divided by breadth of plate, then breadth of plate plus 30 divided by breadth of footing plus 30. So the whole square, this is for sandy soil, for sand. But for clay, you know, segment of footing by segment of plate is equal to breadth of footing by breadth of plate. This is for clay. And a bearing capacity criteria in that bearing capacity of footing divided by bearing capacity of plate, which is equal to we can write bearing capacity of footing divided by bearing capacity of plate is equal to breadth of footing divided by breadth of plate. This is for sand. And a segment of footing, sorry, for a clay. Bearing capacity of footing, which is equal to bearing capacity of plate. Both are same. For clay. For clay, bearing capacity of plate is equal to bearing capacity of footing. Okay. Therefore, the answer for this question, the relationship between settlement of footing with and settlement of plate uh, okay, but here they did not mention anything about the sand or clay. 
so based on our understanding which one is the best option so option for this question is this is not correct so the answer for this question is this one so this is the answer correct okay so bf divided by bp and bp okay so on so forth so answer for this question is this okay